here's the story. You know, out of the clear blue sky, Michigan decides to drop the lawsuit against the Big Ten after after Michigan threatened everybody that you can't do this to our coach, you can't suspend this coach, you did not give him due process, we're going to go to the NCAA, if we have to sue, we're going to sue. And within 24 hours, they dropped it. I was told they dropped it for a number of reasons that the Big Ten gave them evidence that indicated Chris Partridge, the linebacker coach, was the point man for the data that was coming from the outside, the staffer doing all the illegal scouting. Partridge tried to interfere in the Big Ten investigation, tried to, quote, bully people not to cooperate. Well, and then he got fired. The second item that surfaced was this additional sidebar evidence it appears a Michigan booster was the one that was financing the staffers' trips, airplanes, hotels, buying the tickets to go scout all these opponents. A booster. Last I checked, dude, that's a big-time NCAA violation. Yeah. Even if Harbaugh had no knowledge what Partridge was doing in terms of getting his data and didn't know about the big cigar who was paying for the staffer to do this, all of a sudden Michigan dropped the lawsuit. Our coach will sit out the three games. You end your investigation now. Big Ten said they would. So the Big Ten closed the book. Harbaugh will not coach against Ohio State. I think that's a big issue. And if the Buckeyes beat them, this has to be viewed as, quote, a distraction, you know, because Michigan struggled against Maryland. Maryland, the Terrapins, <laughs> str- 31-24, struggled. Mm-hmm. So you're playing Ohio State without your coach on the sidelines to make adjustments, make play calls, et cetera. That's a problem. So we got the Michigan story. USC, UCLA. Holy cow. Trojans got pounded. They got humiliated. TJ Harden runs for a buck 42 for UCLA. Ethan Garbers, their quarterback, fringe guy, throws three touchdowns against that shabby USC defense. Caleb Williams just looked lost on an island. Like he's got to do everything. And he couldn't. Yeah, he pulled up yards throwing at one touchdown pass. His last four or five games, his productivity and their explosiveness has gone by the boards. It's just no longer part of who they are, just like their defense has never been part of anything. So that that was a stunner, the UCLA. I mean, they punched him in the mouth. Oregon, Bo Nix, typical Saturday, 404 yards, six touchdowns, first half. Oregon. Oregon post an easy video, uh, victory. Their offense, like it's like watching a video game. They had 606 yards in total offense, Oregon did. So the Ducks win. Washington in a rainstorm. They had their hands full with the weatherman. They had their hands full with Oregon State. Michael Penix did not put up monster numbers, but they had three takeaways in that game as Washington finally subdued Oregon State in Corvallis. And you'll have to explain to me how this happens. Now, I don't know if anybody in Las Vegas is excited. UNLV is 9-2. and Barry Odom, first-year coach, you know, ex-refugee from Arkansas and a bunch of other places, imports all these guys in the transfer portal. They're 9-2, and and they whacked Air Force. Air Force has lost three in a row. They look like a fatigued football team. And their quarterback, Zach Larrier, has been hurt the last couple of weeks. So Vegas is 9-2. and Go figure that. Just like you think that's strange. Well, same thing with the flagship schools in the conference, San Diego State, Boise State, both conducting head coaching searches. So (laughs) what a strange upside down year in the Mountain West Conference. John, your eyeballs were dilated Saturday. You watched too much college football. Respond. Response. Okay. Well, first of all, you know, I still have a hard time believing that Harbaugh didn't know that the booster was giving money to the linebackers coach and the linebackers coach is flying everywhere and videotaping. Well, it wasn't a linebackers coach. It was a staffer. Oh, pardon me. The independent staffer, the booster was given the airline tickets to and the cash and okay. all that. But then the staffer come back with the dossier of information and give it to Chris Partridge. Okay. And so that's Partridge, the linebacker coach. Yes. So that's Harbaugh why Partridge must got fired. have been thinking, this Partridge guy is a genius. I mean, at some point you got to say, this kind of smells bad. You know, so get, you know, once the uh, um, Michigan said, okay, three game suspension and, and it's over, th- that's the smart move right there. I mean, this should be a far more severe penalty. They did not want to go to a lawsuit, get into court and get into the word of the day discovery. 
to see, yeah, oh yeah, then they're going to learn more and more and more. Um, is the is the game against um, Ohio State in the Big House in Michigan, or is it down at, at the Horseshoe? I think it's down in Horseshoe. Okay, so that yeah, the the offensive coordinator I think is the head coach, and he's a guy to root for. the The other comment I'll make is UNLV. I mean, this is incredible because for the longest time, their football program was a disaster. It was like one of the worst in the Mountain West for years. Decades, uh, decades. I mean, well, they had Randall Cunningham, I think, at one point, but that was like forever ago. And they always played in that old stadium and it was freezing cold. Now they're in that nice place where the Raiders play. Hey, good on Vegas. You know, they got something cooking there. You know, it'd be great to see all UNLV sports across the board to be super competitive because the Las Vegas is growing up in a hurry and it'd be, you know, it's, it's a shame when they're, when their programs are down. Well, they were big time under Tark the shark, but that's a few three point shots ago. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. Hey, okay. Reminder, our podcast brought to you by Dixon line lumber and home center stores, a reminder that they are helping you prepare for the fall holidays.